Hello everybody, this is Bobby Mills from TheIndependent.com with another version of Endzone Online. Today we're at Adams Central High School and we're going to talk with Coach Sean Mulligan, one of the best in the business. How are you, Coach? Thank you for the compliment. You betcha. You betcha. Okay, forgive me, how many years is this as head coach? Uh, it would be my ninth year as um, head coach and 23rd year overall. I was going to guess 14 because it seems like you've been here since God was a child. But uh, well, I, I have been in some here, shape or form. But just, You're only 40 years old, so that no, can't be, no, I don't think can't so. be possible. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a great run. Tell me about your coaching staff. Same um, guys? Uh, we added Coach uh, Matt Obermiller. He was a player for us and played at Hastings College. Yes. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many years ago Matt graduated, maybe 10 years ago, but Matt's been on our staff now, I think, for three years. Um, he helps us out. He's done a great job with our quarterbacks. He focuses on Sam Dirks and the quarterbacks that we've had in the past. He helps out with our secondary and spends a lot of time with Coach Lewis on the defensive side of the ball. And still have Coach Hotelling and Samuelson and Jacob Benson right, so I'm happy to have their individual positions too. So yeah, our, our staff has been continuous other than with the addition of Matt. What a blessing that is, man. Yep. You know, because you can figure out what you're going to do. Uh, who coaches a freshman football team? We all do. Oh, um, you do? We, oh. Well, we have just a, a varsity team and then JV slash reserve team. Our numbers are not as high. We actually went away from a freshman team. Oh, good. That's um, kind of a good idea when your numbers are good. Yes idea. and no. The, the freshman year is really hard and challenging because they've always played against their own grade level, eighth yeah. graders against eighth graders. Now they're playing against sophomores and juniors and practicing against seniors too. So um, it's physically and mentally challenging. So we try to get them through the season and hope that we can keep them out again their, their sophomore year on that too. But um, um, Coach Overmiller, myself, and Coach Lewis on JV games on Mondays, um, we focus on the varsity, and then the other four coaches take the JV slash reserve wow. teams on that day. But we, I mean, we we practice together all the time. We don't separate um, grade levels out. We just don't have the numbers to do that and allow them to practice by themselves. Well, it must be all right because it's sure not hurt here. I, I know teams that well. I know one time Aurora won a state championship. I think they're when those kids were freshmen, they were all and or one and eight. So. I, you must be doing it right. Yeah, there's there's pros and cons to it. Um, I think it would, they would get a lot more um, individual, like our skill set and our offense and our defense, if we were able to coach them by themselves. A lot of times they're used to help prepare for our, our game on Friday night. Um, I know I talked to one of the linebackers just the other day, and he's gotten so much better. He's a freshman middle linebacker for us, and a lot of it is just that he's not – nearly as concerned or as scared because, you know, starting off, I'm going against all these bigger guys, these yeah. older kids, and then he realizes after, well, it's been, what, four, five, six weeks now that it's okay. I, I'm not going to, the, they're not going to just kill me on the offensive and defensive line. There's there's going to be the, the bumps and the bruises that you take from that part of it. But uh, um, so there is a benefit of going against bigger, faster, stronger people too. There is, and, and, and it looks like that the older kids probably Accept them as part of the team, which well, is they—they they can all tell you when they were freshmen. The person, <laughs> the, uh, the person that they were going against that was just physically so much better than them. They all have that individual that they looked up to, admired because that's who they got to practice right. against. I, boy, I can see how beneficial that is. Tell me about your offense. It seems to me, and I think I've got this wrong. Did you? Did, is Hyatt and Collins in a different role no. offensively? Because it looked like. I, I'm thinking, and I'm wrong about it, I, I, I'm pretty sure, because it looked like, well, how are we going to get Nick on the field more, Kona, you know? Yeah. But there it really isn't any any mystery how to get him on, because it looked to me like, okay, Hyatt's going to do fullback now, more of a fullback role, and we're going to get the eye back thing to Nick, but that's not how it is. No. Um, we haven't changed um, what we do. At, we. Rotate them more, so I know Hayes uh, is getting less carries than he has in the past. Yeah. Uh, the comment he made to me after the last game was, he says, I feel a lot better after a football game uh, carrying it 15 times a game versus when I carried it 25, 30 times a game. And then, right now they're both about 50-50. Um, the yardage is pretty um, close with both of them. They're, they're both, I guess it's a good thing to have that problem of oh, trying that. And we are trying to use some more sets to to get them both on the field. Um, they're definitely very good with the ball in space, 
catching the ball and running the ball. Uh, they have improved um, in their blocking for each other. Um, that's still a work in progress that, that we're uh, trying to get because those guys sometimes don't see the value of, of blocking for their teammates on that. But uh, um, the last couple of games, we've seen them on the field a little bit more together, but they're both playing defense for us full time too. And uh, so the ability to rep them on the offensive side of the ball and give themselves breaks so we have a fresh running back pretty much the entire game has been an advantage that we've had right now. Yep, a little bit of a luxury there. Yep. And so on defense, you, there's there's one question I had. They're both playing defense. Um, who, who has surprised you on defense from, from last year to this year as a, as a player? I don't know if there's anybody that would say that has surprised me as far as their performance this year. That's good too. Um, they, they've all improved. Uh, they definitely have gotten bigger, faster, and stronger. Um, their confidence has gone up. Uh, you, know, you know, like a Lucas Gabriel, Jackson game, which hold on a day or three of our returning linebackers. Uh, I thought they were good linebackers last year. They're, they're better linebackers again this year also too. Uh, maybe a couple of Zach Fleischer, or one that didn't see much for her playing time last year offensively or defensively, has done a really good job of um, working towards a senior year and playing playing for us at the high level. Justin Barbie has given us some really quality rep set safety also too. And um, I was talking with my wife the other day too. I said the guys that are playing offensively and defensively, significant snaps for us. All but maybe one individual put in great effort in the summer in weight room or whatever we did football wise. And so as a coach, they're doing what you ask of them to try to be successful in the upcoming season. And then you hope that their skill set and and what we try to do helps them be successful, and uh, they have done that. I can't say that that's always the case every year where you have your best players are doing everything that they can wow. for the team, but this team has been very good in that shape for us. So, okay, yeah, and, and that, that's great to hear, because one of my questions was, and, and I was at your first game, and I felt it, a looseness, yeah. and, and a, 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 not a cohesiveness that I haven't seen before, but it seemed like this, might be a special group in a certain way. I don't know. You would know that. They, they don't. They don't. Um, they're, they're, the last year's group was excellent. The coach too. There was just no internal turmoil. There's a lot of happiness for other ones. You know, I'll use Hyatt and Nick as an example. Hyatt's been a, a rusher over a thousand yards the last two years, and he's getting half the carries that he normally gets. But you never notice it. Um, he's ex he's genuinely genuinely happy for Nick and Nick's success, the team's success. It's not selfishness. Uh, by him or the other players, um, that that's been very rewarding uh, because that is not always the case. No, I suppose but, not. Uh, um, the, the team seems to be very happy for the team and the other players, depending on the role that they take within our program. I know. I just I have I just noticed that there's something a little bit different, and that's probably what I noticed. Uh, and there's some tough kids on that defense. I I like the way that O'Day kid plays. He's a to me, he's heck of an athlete, but yep. there's just there's more than one. Yep. There's been a string of eyebacks here where, I you know this, this like I said, it may not always have been the case, but this this group looks like a good group to coach. Yep. Not that the other ones weren't, but we we felt coming into the season that we had good athletes. Uh, we felt that we had people that could move really well, both offensively and defensively. Not super deep, um, although we are developing more depth than maybe what we thought had coming into the season. Size, we're not you know, a big physically imposing team, but when you can move well, uh, it does have a tendency to help you be a little bit more successful. Speed covers up mistakes. It does. I like the way Leighton Weber plays, too. He, yeah, he's a good football player. <laughs> Brother was pretty good, too. Yes, he was, too. Um, what, do you think you got a tough schedule, or is it just normal, you know, normal AC schedule? I have never you, really thought that we've ever had it. Um, an easy schedule. Oh no, no, uh, it never has been easy by any means, and, and and you know that I guess that maybe just keeps you pushing forward in the right direction. Uh, you know, you look at the schedule before the the season starts, and you go, well, I think we might be favored in this one. This one, we're underdog. Oh, this is a push, but um, you got to be good, healthy, and lucky. And uh, there is luck involved. There is well, and the health part too. You got to be. I mean, you're lucky if you you aren't if you're not having injuries. If you and there's just a lot of aspects that come into a football team. And to look down the road, uh, something that we don't do is because a team week one can be completely different than week oh. nine. And when you have success, um, 
it, it helps you play and for practice and perform at a higher level too. So what you do early on in the season can definitely impact you as you move down the road as the season goes on. Well, I saw something this morning in the paper. How many, how many uh, what chance unbeaten teams have to finish unbeaten? Well, Adam Central's 10%, this is 80%. I, I wouldn't even, that doesn't even, wouldn't even concern me because you're going you're gonna to go out and think you're going to win any game, any, every game anyway. Well, my experience would tell me it's a low low percentage of being undefeated at the end of the season. Oh. My guess is that probably all classes you might have two, three teams that finished the season. The higher the class, the worse yeah. it gets. Yeah. The year we were in the state finals, we lost two games in the regular season. Yeah. I mean, so your, your schedule is a big part of that too. Um, some teams are six and three and have played a really, really difficult schedule. And some teams are six and three and have played not as difficult of a schedule right. too. So it's, it's sometimes it's not always what you think it is just based off of record. Right, sometimes it's nice to have bumped heads with the good ones. Yep. You've had great success here. There's no, there's no getting around it. Ever? Do you ever feel the pressure? Like I'm expected to win here. I, I wouldn't think you would, but I don't know. I don't know what's inside there. Self-imposed pressure. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's is, that's okay though, isn't I, it? I've never felt it. Yeah, that's just the way I was brought up with with uh -huh. my mom and my dad. Just you know, do the best that you can in whatever you do, and um, you know, I never lose. I just I either learn from the experience or I win. Um, that's kind of my mentality has been my entire life and um, I'll, I'll be honest with you um, it's been tough at times when we when we lose early on in my head coaching career we were uh, we struggled as far as winning some games but I've never felt it from the from the fans of Adam Central from the administration from anybody else as far as you know we have to play at a certain level I think probably the biggest pressure that's put on my shoulders to win on Friday night is, is my own pressure that I put on myself to try to allow the kids to be successful, um, to have them uh, be proud of the program that they're a part of to, to win football games. I mean, you don't have to be a winning football team to be proud of the program that you're a part of, but uh, it definitely does help um, your opinion of um, your high school experience. This is a great place, man. One of, one of my favorite schools in all the state is right here. And when I see you before games, you don't look nervous. <laughs> Man, yeah, I can't tell what's inside of the butterfly thing. Uh, I'm very, I'm very serious in nature, so I think I project the same persona <laughs> that's, um, that's, at all times. But uh, that's good. If you saw inside, yeah, I would definitely. And um, my son, who played here for four years, he just graduated last year too. And yep. um, it didn't matter who we were playing, uh, whether he felt that we were going to just dominate them or get dominated. However, he looked at it. He said we were always. Selling our opponents at a high level is because you respect everybody that you play, and then yeah. um, see how the game goes on that too. But uh, um, uh, the weekend's a lot better when you win a football game on Friday night than when you lose. Pretty good. So my last question is, and then we—I I wasn't going to go over this before, but um, I ran into a, a lovely lady on the on the field after the game with Menden, and I thought, I wonder if that's Coach Mulligan's wife, and. Uh, Indeed, it was. Yeah. Is that an every game thing? Yeah. Uh, my wife Stephanie. Um, that is so cool. She doesn't um, uh, miss a game. Uh, I think a lot of people outside of programs don't realize how important family is oh. to success. And um, she's my psychologist. She's the one that I uh, vent to when practices don't go well, games don't go well. Um, She's always in the same spot up there for every game two, and the first one to see me after a game two. So I couldn't do it without her. That is great because there's only two other coaches that I've noticed that. Um, uh, Jeff Gross on it, not at McCook. His wife was always there. Always yeah. kissed her before they started. I don't know. Good luck, and then Paul Lamangi from Omaha Burke now West Side. They're always around. And are you empty nest at home now? I am, and it's been a little bit though, different this year too because my daughter was in the band. Um, before Elijah was on the football team. So after she walked off every year in a home game, she would give me a kiss on the cheek. Oh, so that gosh. was very rewarding. And then Elijah was um, a player for, for me a number of years. And so now it's just my wife and myself too. My my parents are a great support too. They come to, to every game, um, home or away too. So they're always there uh, for that part too. So I've been very blessed to have a great support system, which it makes it easier too. To do what I do. Yeah, and if after everybody's gone, you have to have somebody to, to talk football with you and understand the ups and downs of coaching career. Uh, it sounds like you're pretty well set. The, the bad thing is, is that, you know, your family sometimes, uh, like my wife, for example, 
um, when I lose a football game, it also affects her too because she knows how it affects me. And yeah. so the the uh, um, impact that it has not only on the athletes and the coaches, but sometimes translates over into the family too on that. So it's been a, a very rewarding experience for both of us, but it's also been a, a very stressful experience too, but one that we're very grateful and proud to be a part of. There's always ups and downs, man. You know that. There is. Well, I noticed that. I noticed that I thought that was the neatest thing in the world. I've only seen it three times, so well, uh, I hope it keeps. I hope it keeps. On. Yeah, she'll always be there. Yeah. So anyway, hey, thanks, man, for okay. taking the time to talk. To, but you know, we've uh, been through some times trying to get this done, but we got her done. Good luck to you the rest of the way, and uh, I don't think I'll you'll need it. But uh, some te some people say pray that we win. No, I never pray for wins and losses, just for good luck and injuries. Yeah. So that's the that's the direction I'll go here. So thank you for doing this, by the way. Thank you. You bet. So for John Salmon, behind the camera, it produces the show. This is Bobby Mills for Endzone Online saying we'll catch you down the road next time.